Um, so next up, we have um, Raza from Human Loop, um, one of the startups out of the computer science department at, uh, uh, at UCL. So he'll be joining me and we'll have a, a, a chat through uh, the journey so far and what, what Human Loop are all about. So hopefully we can wel welcome Raza to the stage. Hi, David. Hi, happy Raza. to be here. Hey, great. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, great to see you today. Um, so tell uh, everyone about Human Loop. What, what problem is Human Loop solving, Raza? Yeah, so you know, Human Loop is trying to make it much, much easier for companies to take natural language AI and get the benefits of it and get into production. So in the last few years in computer science, there's been this explosion. I think lots of people are aware of it in deep learning and natural language processing technologies. But the reality is that most companies still take an enormous amount of time to get uh, an NLP idea from sort of idea to production. Uh, they're often bottlenecked by the need for they label, they hide lots of labeled data, and the whole process is extremely waterfall. Um, so Human Loop essentially makes it much, much, much easier to go from idea to deployed NLP model in a, in a very short amount of time. So how are you doing that? What, what's, what's the secret to, to shortening those timescales? Yeah, so the, the main difference of you know, what we do differently essentially is that we actually incorporate uh, the human annotators, the subject matter experts that are teaching the AI systems in the training loop of the models. And so this allows us to do a whole bunch of things, but it's worth maybe just contrasting it with the traditional approach to understand where the benefits come from. So normally if someone wants to put a natural language AI system into production, the first thing they need to do actually, the dirty secret of most of modern machine learning and AI is that someone needs to teach the system. There's, you know, the knowledge has to come from somewhere. So imagine that you wanted to do legal contract classification. The first thing that people would do is they'd get a bunch of data, they'd manually label it, they'd give it to a data science team who would annotate that data, and then they'd hand it off to a different team to put it into production who are the sort of software engineering team. And with Human Loop, we combine all of that into a single closed loop process centered on the data and the subject matter experts themselves. So they would load the data into our platform. As they annotate, we're constantly finding the highest value data to label. So instead of labeling at random like it's traditionally done, we only label the tiny subset of data that's going to be most valuable for the model. So we dramatically reduce the volume of labels required. And then because the model is learning in real time as annotation is happening rather than after the fact, you get feedback instantly. You can see how well the model is doing as you annotate, which means you know when to stop. But more importantly, you can get things into production much quicker. And there are no handoffs to a software engineering team to deploy the model. It's already hosted. It's ready to go. And that means the time to value can go from you know literally even projects at fairly successful scale ups that we speak to can take two, two and a half months a year to put you know a complex ML system to production can do that in days with Human Loop. Great, and this all comes from the, uh, a deep understanding of the kind of uncertainty parameters deep within models and being able to sort of predict where that is and and uh, and, and surface them. The team behind that obviously is really important to to being able to do that. Can you tell us a little bit about the team and their expertise and why you're the perfect team to be building this kind of system? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're here for the UCL Tech Fund and naturally we're a, we're a spin out from the computer science department. Myself and Peter were both doing PhDs there with Professor David Barber, um, who's also part of the, the company. And we were focused on an area called probabilistic deep learning. So this intersection of being able to reason about uncertainty and reason, you know, probabilistically about the world and also deep learning, which focuses on extracting patterns from, from unstructured data. And so Peter and Mai's own PhD research contributes towards this. David is you know, a world leading expert in Bayesian deep learning. He's been um, part of you know, that whole sort of revolution for, for a long time now. And then we're joined by a, a close friend of mine and a researcher from Amazon Alexa, Jordan Burgess, who was previously part of another UCL AI spin out actually, Bloomsbury AI that was acquired by Facebook. Um, and Emine Yilmaz, who are both experts in natural language understanding and information extraction. And so there's two halves kind of coming together of deep expertise and probabilistic deep learning uh, with the natural language and information extraction expertise that allows us to, to pull the whole system together. And you know, more than just being uh, people who are, you know, I guess experts in machine learning and AI, we all also have some experience historically in other startups. So I mentioned Jordan was at Bloomsbury, I've been involved at Monolith AI, and so I think what makes us the right team for this is not just the deep technical expertise, but actually the experience building companies before and you know the lessons we learned from that. 
Great, great. Um, just a reminder, if you're watching this on, on, on Hopin, you can uh, ask questions on the chat channel on the right-hand side of the screen, so please feel free to do that. Um, Raza, whilst I'm thinking of questions, um, what have you built so far? So you've been, Human Loop has been a company for just about a year now. She's just You've just gone through your year birthday, is that about right? Yeah, I think sort of the 6th of March or something, I think, was our, was our incorporation <laughs> date. Um, great. Yeah, so I think we, we came out of the gates pretty quick. Um, the first few months were spent speaking to prospective customers, trying to understand the problem as deeply as possible. But a little over six months ago, we launched the first version of the product that kind of does what I described end to end. So for for both classification models, so models where you want to take in text and put it into categories, and also for information extraction models, you can do everything I just described. So teams have used Human Loop already for contract classification, to extract information from real estate documents, for uh, social media understanding. So, you know, if you imagine a company wants to understand about a particular brand, they have millions of uh, mentions online, actually training a system to do that can require a huge amount of annotated data. Human Loop can help reduce that, that volume quite dramatically. Um, so today, if, a, if someone uses the Human Loop platform, they load up the data, the textual data into the platform, a team of annotators is invited. Uh, we work with a lot of subject matter experts. So you know, what makes NLP quite different to computer vision is often the people who are training these systems are actually very expensive knowledge workers. So whereas in computer vision, you know, anyone could put a bounding box around a pedestrian, actually to classify a contract or even something as simple as customer service requires domain knowledge, right? If you're gonna be able to read a customer service message and understand the intent of the user, you need to know something about the company and the product. Um, and so people you know, invite their domain experts, they label as a team together, and we help them sort of turn that label data into a model extraordinarily fast. Great. Quick question from the audience, and it's one I remember asking when we did our due diligence uh, a long time ago now. How do you counter potentially unwelcome bias when selecting high value data for annotation? I think we had conversations about pomegranate classification when we chatted about this back then, Rasa, but uh, it'd be useful to, to talk through that. Yeah, I mean, It'd be helpful, I guess, I wish I could have a dialogue with the person in the audience, because obviously bias means so many different things to different people. But there's, I guess, two forms of bias that might sort of be relevant. And and the, the more common one that comes up is just bias that might affect the speed with which the model learns, or sort of statistical statistical bias. And there's a few things we do here, but I think one of the, the key factors of what we do is that we're able to distinguish two forms of uncertainty uncertainty that comes from a lack of knowledge about the world, what people call epistemic uncertainty, from uh, what people call aleatoric uncertainty, noise. And so we're trying to sort of find the places where the model lacks knowledge about the world, rather than just sort of sample noisy data, which could be damaging to the performance of a model if you didn't distinguish the two. Got it, got it. Um, and what's next for, for Humanly? What's happening over the next uh, year or so? What's, what's your big targets? Yeah, so you know, having only recently taken the product to market, we've been working really closely with a small handful of initial customers to iterate quickly on the product and get it to a place where we feel like it delivers significant value. And kind of having reached that milestone recently, we started to see the first you know, five, six customers use it in production, push the boundaries of your boundaries of it, you know, try to break it, get it to work. And we've seen people get real value from it. Now the, the next stage is, okay, taking something that we know works and has delighted a small number of people and thinking about how do we distribute this to many, many more people so more can, can get the value. Great, and I know um, you've, you've got some you know, difficult technological challenges you're, you're working through to kind of make the system better and better and you're looking to hire some of the best talent around. What sort of people are you looking for? Who, who, should, who should reach out to you? Oh uh, yeah, I think you know, one of the things we're trying to build as a culture is a company that's still deeply research orientated, but also has a product focus. So a sort of deep mind that ships as it were. And um, and so in terms of like the, the tech that we're hiring, most of it is actually on the product side. We're mostly recruiting software engineers, a designer, a front end engineer, but we also have some really interesting research challenges about how do you do test set construction efficiently? How can we learn not just from annotations, but from human explanations? Um, and these require, you know, quite serious machine learning knowledge. And so we're also looking to start growing that research team so we can be pushing the boundaries, not only on sort of improving the product, but also on these new research challenges. Fabulous. Um, and, and lastly, um, you, know, you touched a bit on this at the beginning, but what sort of companies, you know, we have a lot in our network. I mean, in fact, one of our portfolio companies already is, is working with you to solve a big challenge they have. What sort of companies are you looking to work with? What questions will they be asking themselves and will make them a good, a good connection for you? 
Absolutely. Well, so many companies can benefit from NLP, right? Sort of it helps with everything from customer service to process automation. But I think the challenge is often having the subject matter expertise, you know, having the machine learning talent. And so I guess I would say if you're a technical product manager or you're a data scientist sitting in a company where you would like to use NLP, but you're worried about the cost of data annotation or getting the right data, um, you're worried about the ML engineering required, I would say you should come to Human Loop because we can help you build those systems much, much faster without necessarily needing an army of PhDs, without needing thousands and thousands of rows of labeled data. Great. Um, well, yeah, it's an extraordinarily exciting journey uh, you know, from a company being formed only a year ago to, to where you are now with a product with delighted customers. Like we know from uh, one of our own portfolio customers, uh, one of our own portfolio companies within within the Albion VC portfolio is getting incredible value out of your product. So super exciting, super exciting to see the journey. Thank you for joining me today, Raza. Uh, and we of look course. forward Thanks to- Thanks so much for having me. Anyway, thank you for coming.